Women warriors have always captured the imagination of men. They're one of the most romanticized aspects of human history. Even though women warriors have existed in Africa since ancient times, such as the Kandaki Queens of Meroe, the most popular are no doubt the so-called Daomi Amazons of West Africa. What up African world, it's Home Team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. To begin, the title Daomi Amazon is a European invention. Women in Daomi occupied various roles throughout the kingdom and were called by different names based on their function. But once the so-called Amazons developed into a full-fledged fighting force, they were more consistently referred to as the Mino. Throughout the video, I'll be referring to them as the Mino, even though they may not have been called that during the time frame in discussion. To be honest, it was European visitors that really popularized the Mino, as they frequently spoke about them. I can imagine they would have been hard to ignore. This 19th century promotion, if you will, certainly led to their later inclusion in Black Panther's Dora Milaje. Despite their fame, I can't say that we in the diaspora know much about their history, especially their origin. In general, the Kingdom of Daomi were constantly at odds with the Yoruba state of Oyo, as Oyo forced them to pay tribute and would frequently raid them, enslaving large portions of the populace. This gave Daomi only two options either constantly bend the knee to the Yoruba, or create a warrior culture, and it would seem as though Daomi chose the latter. And this may have inspired an idea in Daomi that all hands must be on deck to protect the kingdom, as the fond people of Daomi were grossly outnumbered by the Yoruba. Unfortunately, they suffered from a lack of manpower to deal with the constant Yoruba threat. To put it in context, the Fon language of Daomi is spoken today by around 2 million people and the Yoruba language is spoken by about 20 million or more. And this ratio was probably similar in the 18th and 19th centuries. Even though this manpower issue may be the underbelly of how the Mino became an official military unit, it does not conclusively explain their origin and evolution. So let's start from the beginning. Scholars have differing views but most would say the origin of the Mino begins with the Daomin ruler Wegbaja. Wegbaja ruled Daomi around 1640, and he's said to have created the well-known corpse of female elephant hunters called the Gebeto. This unit is later said to have been transformed into a military unit under his reign as well. Now, female hunters may have predated Wegbaja in the region, but he can be seen as making them official and forming them into an organized unit, re-establishing their purpose for the use of the state rather than individual gain. Despite the credit he gets for forming the Gabeto unit, scholars are critical about him actually forming them into a military unit later on in his reign, as it cannot be proven conclusively. The next process of evolution for the establishment of the Mino comes from Wigbaja's children, his son, Akaba, and his daughter, Ahangbe. They were twins, and according to local oral tradition, the omen custom required that twins be treated equally. Because of this, Ahangbe shared the throne with Akaba. In practice, however, Akaba was given all the power, and Ahangbe was offered all the symbolic benefits of kingship. What's really fascinating are the oral traditions that continue to emerge concerning this time period. According to the Fon, Akaba died of smallpox during a war against one of Daomi's neighbors called the Owemeno. Ahangbe then posed as her brother during the war effort and led the troops to victory. During this time, the Owemeno oral tradition claims that they faced women soldiers during the war. This oral tradition leads some scholars to consider the idea that Akaba and Ahangbe made the Mino an official military unit or at the very least, used armed women to reinforce Daomi's power. 
This certainly would have been an evolution compared to the time of their father. Understandably, this may not be enough for people. This tradition does hold some weight, but it still doesn't conclusively prove an official organized military unit. King Agaja came to the throne in 1718, and he tells us himself that he used a female bodyguard unit to guard the palace. At the very least, this proves an official and organized use of an armed female unit with a specific, though limited purpose. It seems likely that the Mino we know of today were initially the king's personal bodyguards and were later used more often in warfare, forming into what European visitors came to know as the Amazons. One of the most interesting campaigns of the Mino came when Tegbesu was on the throne. In 1764, a clash between the Mino and the Ashanti occurred. Daomi was victorious. The Ashanti were apparently taken aback by the use of women warriors as they made note of it in their oral tradition. In 1777, the head of the French fort at Waida, Oliver de Montagueri, traveled north to pay his respects to King Capengla. In the palace at Cana, he saw a great number of armed women forming a sort of square battalion. They lined up 15 by 15, and as they paraded, they fired a musket volley. Soon, they formed into two lines and kept up a general fire, which was very well executed. Archibald Dazzle, a British adventurer and governor of the Gold Coast, tells us that several hundreds are trained to the use of arms under a female general and subordinate officers appointed by the king. These warriors are regularly exercised and go through their evolutions with as much expertness as the male soldiers. Another point of reference is King Gezo, who came to the throne in 1818. He's said to have reorganized, improved, and institutionalized the Mino, making them an elite force, or at least putting them on par with his male units. In fact, King Gezo increased the number of the Mino, forming hundreds into thousands, regularized and intensified their training, put them in a uniform, and introduced other innovations. Under King Gezo, the Mino can be seen as being a solidified contingent of the army. King Gezo's reformation of his army is what we're familiar with as it concerns the Mino today. From all these oral and written accounts, the picture doesn't necessarily get more clear. There doesn't seem to be an exact origin for the Mino in terms of a female fighting force being established by one king, but it seems as though it was a collective effort and an evolution over time by multiple kings who sought the use of women for similar purposes. But we can ask ourselves a different question. Instead of trying to understand the exact origins of the Mino, we can now ponder to what extent did women play a role in state formation for Daomi? In my opinion, the answer is clear. Women played an important role both politically and physically throughout Daomian history. The establishment of the Mino we are familiar with today was simply the apex. In other words, one can make the argument that there never existed one Mino group, but multiple Minos throughout Daomi's history, to their existence as elephant hunters, to their use as royal guards, and their eventual position as official military units. Daomian women have clearly played a critical role in reinforcing Daomi's statehood. Well, I'm all out, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know that so. Remember your ancestors. Peace.